Let's return to the to good model where good one is discrete and preferences are quasi linear. Linear in good two. This setup is perfect for investigating a new concept that we will call consumer surplus. We have a to good model, good one is discrete and can only be consumed in integer values. We normalize the price of the second good to one such that the equation of the budget line is P1X1 plus X2 is equal to M. The quasi-linear preferences can be represented by the utility function u equal to v of x1 plus x2. Preferences will be well behaved, so we are imposing that v is strictly increasing and strictly concave. This will make the indifference curve strictly decreasing and strictly convex. A quick review of optimal choice, reservation prices and demand curve for the setup. R1 is the reservation price where you are indifferent between 0 and 1 units of good 1. In general, Rn is the reservation price where you are indifferent between consuming n-1 and n units of good 1. Good 1 is assumed to be ordinary and the reservation prices are strictly decreasing. We consume n units of good 1 whenever P1 is in between Rn and Rn plus 1. In a previous lecture, we have demonstrated that if the utility function is quasi-linear, then the nth reservation price is equal to v of n minus v of n minus 1. Let's consider the problem of finding v of n when reservation prices are known. We know that we can normalize v of 0 to be equal to 0. We can add any constant to the utility function and it will represent the same preferences. With n equal to 1, we see that R1 is equal to V of 1. For N equal to 2, R2 is equal to V of 2 minus V of 1, from which we see that V of 2 is equal to R1 plus R2. We can keep on doing this, giving us V of N equal to R1 plus R2 plus and so on up to Rn. Using the summation sign, V of N is the sum where I goes from 1 to N of Ri. Now, v is only a part of the utility function, but it is the important part in determining the utility that we get from consuming good 1. v of 1 is therefore called the gross benefit or the gross consumer surplus of consuming 1 unit of good 1. In terms of the demand curve for good 1, the gross benefit of consuming 1 unit of good 1 is this green rectangle. The area of this rectangle is r1 times 1, which is precisely V of 1. V of 2 is the gross benefit of consuming 2 units of good 1, and it's equal to R1 plus R2. The second green rectangle has an area of R2 times 1, and the total green area is V of 2. In general terms, V of n is the gross benefit or the gross consumer surplus from consuming n units of good 1, and it is the area under the demand curve from x1 equal to 0 up to x1 equal to n. Think about this for a while and convince yourself that it makes sense to use the area under the demand curve as a measure of the benefit to our consumer of consuming xn units of good 1. Starting from a very high price and reducing it, R1 is the price where the consumer would shift from 0 to 1 units of good 1. R1 is therefore a good measure of how much she values the first good. Similarly, R2 is a good measure of how much she values a second unit of good 1. By adding reservation prices, we end up with a reasonable measure of her benefits from consuming n units of this good. Consider again the demand curve for good 1. Let's say that P1 is this value in between the second and the third reservation price. She will then consume two units of good 1. Her gross benefit from the first unit is R1. This is how she values one unit of this good. However, she only pays P1 for each unit. The rest, R1 minus P1, is pure benefits for her. We will call this difference the consumer surplus from the first unit and it's equal to this green rectangle. It's a benefit that falls to the consumer simply because she's able to purchase something for a price less than the value she associates to it. Similarly, the consumer surplus from the second unit is the difference R2 minus P1, this smaller green rectangle. Her total net surplus at price P1 is therefore this green area 
in between the demand curve and a horizontal line at P1. Let's make sense of this mathematically. If she consumes n units of good 1, then she is left with m minus P1n to spend on good 2. Since we have normalized the price of good 2 to be equal to 1, x2 is equal to m minus P1n. With quasi-linear utility, the utility she receives from the bundle n comma m minus P1n is v of n plus m minus P1n. Removing income from this expression, we have what is called the consumer surplus or the net consumer surplus from consuming n units of good one. Consumer surplus is often abbreviated CS. The consumer surplus of consuming n units of good one is V of n minus P1n. Since V of n is the sum of all reservation prices, consumer surplus can also be written like this. In any case, the gross benefit, the sum of the reservation prices, is the area under the demand curve all the way down to the horizontal x1 axis. P1 times n is the rectangle with height P1 and base n. Removing this from the gross benefit, we are left with the area in between the demand curve and the P1 horizontal line.